I'm up on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show today. We're going to be talking about plant diseases in your garden right now and what you need to do and how to get rid of them. And your garden September to-do list checklist. And we have uh, Doug Salami. He is a professor of ecology and entomology from the University of Delaware. So that's a great, more scientific information. Plus your garden questions. That all starts right now. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. So glad you're taking time out of your day to join us on the program, whether you're in Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Southeast Michigan, Banning, California, or listening around the country, around the world, via the simple radio app, the TuneIn app, or through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, underneath the radio tab, podcast replay, or in-studio video replay. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Hi, Baird. You can find all of our content at that website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, where we have over 1,400 garden videos, short and long format, and a variety of long and short and many topics to cover, as well as in garden and in radio studio in every episode of this show in segment and full uh, length. The, uh, the executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root-to-soil contact. Leave the shovel and the spade in the shed. Hand-welded and made in the USA. And we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. You've got a question, you've got a comment, you want to get a hold of us, you can do that by the Ivy Organics Communication Hotlines. Ivy Organics 3 one Plant Guard naturally protects your plants against damaging sunburn, insects and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces, on your roses, fruit and nut trees, ornamental trees and shrubs. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe and organic. For more information, you can visit ivyorganics.com. You can send us an email through the Ivy Organic 3 one Plant email inbox. The address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also send us a text on the Instant Access Ivy Organic 3 one Plant Guard Instant Access text hotline. Send your questions via text to us at 414-368-9311. Again, that number is 414-368-9311. Diseases in our gardens are as common as weeds in our garden. Most, if not all of you, have experienced at least some of these in which we're going to discuss. Some of you may have them currently in your garden and may not be aware of what they are, and others may have properly identified these diseases but are unsure of how to get rid of them so it reduces the risk from having it again next year. And we're going to cover four of them. Four of them. Um, So the first one is late blight on tomatoes. This typically occurs as we get past October. This is like late late, late September, early October. October, Now this is not the same as early blight. No. Two different diseases. Right. So it's not early blight, it's late blight. So if you grow tomatoes longer into the season, you could see this. It can come as soon as early as September, and then when that happens, it will knock out a whole entire county at once. Um, But late blight, you know you have it. You'll get these dark spots on the leaves, the stems of the tomatoes, as well as the tomatoes. The fruit may look perfectly fine and turn ripe. You bring it indoors. And within a couple of days, it becomes blotchy and very uh, rigid and bad. It it, It looks like, it just looks like a brownish, blackish color, but it's... Spots all over the fruit. Mm -hmm. Do not consume any of that. Uh, If the plant is infected, you want to dispose of the plant. Uh, Again, this can occur very late in the season. You'll have green stem, brown spot, or area of the stem... Green stem, black area, very noticeable in the leaves, stem, and tomatoes, as you spoke about. And to get rid of it, we want to throw it in the trash. We do not want to compost it. We do not want to put it in the city's municipal compost or on the street for city pickup. We want to get rid of it because, or you don't want to put it in your compost. So what happens is that if you put it in your compost, or you put it on the curb or whatever, or you even burn it, this is an airborne fungus. So those spores will travel throughout the air. So no matter what you do... 
if you try to compost it and then you in yeah the spore yeah you continue to let that spore thrive and grow if you burn it obviously it's going to go, go through the air as well so you want that's why you want to just dispose them put them in the trash put them into the landfill whatever you put them in your comp if you was to put them in your compost or put them in the city compost these spores, if kept warm enough all winter long, will stay alive and be re- reintroduced into your garden and cause problems far earlier in the season than if you would just throw them away. Now, we want to clean up the infected area, the area where the tomatoes have the late blight on them. If you do not get every leaf or every tomato or stem, it is not detrimental, as in the upper portions of the Midwest, the winters are cold enough that kills those spores. But we just don't want to keep them warm in our compost pile. Right. Next problem is leaf rust on our beans. So it literally looks like rust. It looks like you have a rust substance. When you touch it with your finger, it's going to rub off onto your finger like rust would. This, this is also another airborne disease. This is what we have experienced to be more prevalent on pole beans as pole beans will produce all the way up till frost versus the bush beans that take only that will only grow for 40 to uh, will take 40 to 60 days to mature produce for 2 to 3 weeks and their life cycle is over so we see this on the pole beans uh semi regularly sometimes uh each year late in the season as well, kind of similar to the time period that the late blight on the tomatoes uh, occur as well. Now, how do we deal with this? Uh, It it comes through the air, so there's not a whole lot of uh, control in which we can do it. I do, before we get to how we fix the bean rust, revert back to the late blight on the tomatoes. Some people will say you can use a copper fungicide on it. There's no cure for late blight on tomatoes. Once you have it, the end is already written of the story of the tomato plant. All right, let's go back to the... I want right. to note that. I want to go back to the... That's why it's a late blight, which is, even if you get it, it's typically not the the end of the world. If you got that in July, that would be different. But Most people are tired of yeah. tomatoes, or they've lost that flavor in which we're familiar with in the garden. So back to the bean rust. Airborne comes in near the end of the season. We do not want to eat any plants that are infected or bean that are infected. If the plant's beginning to be infected, the plant do not consume anything on it. How do we deal with it? Same thing with with, uh, the late blight. You just want to (laughs) dispose of those plants, get rid of them, and then if if you're growing your beans on a trellis or something, just wash it off with hot hot soapy water. Hot soapy water and uh, do not burn it either. (coughs) More uh, popular one is powdery mildew on our squash, cucumbers, grapes, and some flowers. Yeah, pow- powdery mildew looks just like a powder was sprinkled on the leaves of those plants. And you can tell when you have powdery mildew, it's just like a whitish color, especially on... Coating. The coating, right. Um, so powdery mildew is caused... Now, this is not something... It's not a necessarily a disease. It's actually a mildew problem. And so what happens is that as we move towards our fall equinox... Our days start to get, our nights start to get cooler. So we're moving to the cooler nights. So it may be 80, 85 degrees during the day, but now we have a larger gap in temperature from day to night. So it's because you have more, more you still I have a lot of moisture in the air. Right, because as the nighttime temperatures, we typically get dew, and there's not enough, right. the dew sits there's, on yeah, the leaves. It sits on the leaves. So we're going to have the, probably the same amount of moisture in the air as we have all summer, but now we're getting these cooler nights, and it's not allowing the plants to dry as much and it's letting the dew sit on the leaves and if it rained then the rain's going to sit there too same thing as in your bathroom if it's not ventilated correctly you get mildew beginning to form around certain areas of the the bathroom same thing here if it's not able to dry out now this is detrimental to your plants because that powdery mildew begins to thicken and so basically it stops the plant from photosynthesizing it blocks it from absorbing the sun rays to continue to grow but the good news is is that this is not as bad as like maybe bean rust could be or late blight on your tomatoes. You can spray things on your leaves to help break it up, and um, you can also trim the leaves. You can remove up to 25% of the foliage from your plant. But be careful when you remove that and how you take it out of your garden because those spores can very easily drop on adjacent plants, attach to your fingers, your gloves, now you're touching other plants, and or insects that are on the infected plant will work their way over to the uninfected plant and introduce that mildew. So we want to, and there's many different recipes online in which we can spray 
products on, household products, in order to disrupt the pH level to break up and sometimes prevent, reduce, or eliminate the powdery mildew in which we're seeing on our plants. Correct. So, yeah, you can use things like vinegar. You can use baking soda. And these are all diluted, and there's recipes that you can find online. You can use mouthwash. You can use um, neem oil as a carrier to help apply these to the plant. And it, we've had it, we've done it, and it, we do have success. Yes, it, sometimes it works very well, other times the plant is too far gone. Now the question we get sometimes is, can I do this before I see the powdery mildew as a preactive or a, a proactive instead of a reactive measure? I don't see why you couldn't do it. Uh, as long you're just keeping that pH level disrupted on the leaves to prevent the, that, that mildew to uh a pla- giving a platform for that mildew to form if you keep spraying that, that mixture on it on a regular basis. If I were to do that, I would yeah. use something like apple cider vinegar diluted because that's going to be safer for the plant. I wouldn't go ahead and coat it with water and baking soda. Right. I would use something like the apple cider vinegar because that will help um, It'll help kind of keep that acid on that leaves, but not in a bad way. But you need to dilute it. You can't just go and spray these things. So a lot of times it's like a four per one part application or a two for three, but you do have to look online to make sure that you are applying it correctly. And we haven't forgot about you flower lovers out there. Rose rust is a problem that many rose gardeners will see. And what is the... uh, telltale signs and how do we deal with rose rust sure so rose rust is going to look like rust on the plants and the similar to the the bean rust uh yeah kind of it's more splotchy okay okay um and you'll you'll see it on the plant and the flowers and so this is typically a problem that starts at the nursery so if you went to the nursery you bought a rose plant and then maybe you bought it this year or whatever you put it in it's starting to grow then you get this rose rust that's not good you want to buy from a reputable reputable nursery or uh, garden center. How can we? Maybe you don't want to buy. You don't want to buy it from the side of the road from some fly by night guy. I don't know, but um, <laughs> what you can do is you can trim back the bad areas. The good thing is is that a lot of these rose, a lot of the plants will come back from the rose rust, but it is airborne. So again, you don't want to put that in your compost or anything like that. You just want to throw it away. So that's uh, some of the. Uh, things to deal with uh, w- some of the diseases in which we can see at this point of the year and what we can do in order to fix the problems. We've got the late blight on the tomatoes, which is not always a common thing. Uh, bean rust, we do see. Powdery mildew, we are seeing now. And rose rust is a uh, occurring issue with our t- uh, roses. In our thing, and with the rose rust, we want to remove the debris around the plants because that's going to help right. uh, deal. We want to do really, some really thorough plant cleanup. So that's uh, keep those in mind. If you haven't had them, be aware of what they are, and if you do have them, this is how you can fix it. Well, when we come back, uh, we are going to talk about some September chores in which we need to do in our garden. Uh, gardening seasons are not over. So we're going to give you some things that you're going to have to do or you should do or we recommend you doing for the month of September in your garden. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Gardening information, visit the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com. But wait, but wait, but wait, until after the show, we still have more garden information to talk about. Garden seeds do not have to cost a fortune, just 99 cents at migardener.com. Now with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, and organic flower, vegetable, and herb seeds available year-round, pay less and get more seeds. Shipping as low as $2.50. That just makes sense. Go to migardener.com for seeds and garden needs, tools, and special blend fertilizers. migardener.com. It's that simple. Family owned and operated. Dharmaceuticals essential oils are high grade, very pure, and high in quality. They have synergized blends made with the finest raw materials. For more information and to order, visit dharmaceuticals.com. 
Take the pain out of planting with the Pro Plugger 5-in-1 planting tool. Step, twist, pull, and you're ready to plant. Digs perfect size planting holes. Soil gets stored in the tube and empties from the top. Helpful for weeding. ProPlugger.com Homegrown Garlic. This garden tip is sponsored by BioSafe. Organic solutions that are effective. They offer an array of eco-friendly products. From plant food to fertilizer to one-of-a-kind herbicides. Organic weed killer. Grow stronger, healthier with BioSafe. Visit BioSafe.net to learn more. And save 10% on your next order by using coupon code TWVG at checkout. Fall is the best time to plant garlic. You want to plant it about 30 days before the ground freezes to allow the plant to establish a good root system. And it is harvested in late June to mid-July. Soft neck is best for the south. Hard neck is best for the north. Spending time scrubbing pesky dirt off your hands after gardening? Use Workman's Friends Superior Skin Cream with added barrier protection, creating a protective layer on your skin surface, allowing for easy cleanup, all while moisturizing and healing your skin. Non-greasy, fragrant-free, and fast-absorbing. Apply first, get to work, wipe clean. This friend has you covered for whatever you're getting into. Visit WorkmansFriendBrand.com. Do you have a problem with deer or small herbivores eating your vegetation? There is a natural solution that is safe for your pets and family. Bobex is the answer. An environmentally friendly solution to protect your plants will not wash off and is guaranteed. Bobex deer was independently tested against nine known competitors and rated 93% effective, second only to a physical barrier. Bobex can be used on all types of ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Ask for it by name at your local independent garden center. Find out more? Visit Bobex.com. B-O-B-B-E-X dot C-O-M. Shield and Seal Vacuum Sealers and the highest quality vacuum sealing products, unique black and clear in all black bags, protecting your produce and product better than traditional bags. Find out more at shieldandseal.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Clyde's Vegetable Planting Chart, Dharmaceutical, Dr. Earth, Flame Engineering, Handy Safety Knife, Hydro Box, Wisconsin Greenhouse Company, MI Gardener, Outpost Natural Food Co-op, Root Maker, Soil Diva, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your host Joey and Kelly Berry. Dr. Earth is committed to clean and healthy gardening through creating cutting-edge, natural, and organic garden-friendly products. Based on research and innovation, after 28 years, they are the leader in the organic lawn and garden industry. They do not use ingredients such as biosolids or composted household waste or synthetic chemicals. Instead, they have manure free fertilizer, organic soils, insect control, and liquid fertilizers. If you want to grow the best quality food organically to feed your family in the founding principles of what Dr. Earth is all about, they have the experts to find the most innovative ways to help you grow your best organically. Visit DrEarth.com for more information and where to buy. September is uh, here, and we've got some chores to do in our garden. Some may be applicable to you, others may be not, and some of you just are done with the garden, and uh, you've had a successful year, or you've had a failure this year, uh, but we want to encourage you to try it again and possibly do it differently than you did last year or this year because if things didn't work, usually Holly and I, we we try to do the same thing at least two years in a row because there are some variables that can change. But beyond that, uh, when you continue to do the same thing over again and get the same result, that is... Insanity. Yeah, there you go. So these are things you can do throughout the month. This is not like this weekend. Well, you gotta this get weekend it done. you get all this done. Like you know, you kind of have to think about your where you live. Maybe if it's better to do some of these things as we move into October. 
versus right now. So one thing is to stop pruning and fertilizing. Um, yes, that's true. But if you fertilize your lawn in the fall, then maybe that's something you want to do. Pruning might mean like if you prune your tomatoes, you're going to want to stop doing that. Versus if you're if you prune your perennials in the fall, that's something you want to prune. So it's like stop pruning what you prune during the summer. Well, the tomatoes you can prune uh, about 30 days before your first average frost to stress the plant to put the fruit onto the ripe and the fruit. But yes, uh, we want to stop that. Uh, what else we want to do here? You want you want to bring your summer house plants that you may keep outside in the sp- in the summer. You might want to bring those back in. We and talked wanna- last week on the program that how to transition them from outdoors to indoors. Uh, basically, you want to try to do it when the the ambient temperature is close to the same, so the shock is not as intense on these plants. Right. And we want to make sure they still have adequate sunlight or. Uh, a unit such as a happy leaf and put them underneath happy leaf LED grow light, put them under that unit to keep them thriving uh, throughout the fall and winter months. Definitely. Now, this is something that you want to think about as, it, depending on where you live and as you get closer to October, is to cover your plants if there's frost warnings. We can have frost warnings as soon as mid September, but it's something that you, you need to be uh, aware of and have a plan. Um, then you also want to do some. Not necessarily planning for next year, but your garden is probably at its peak right now. So maybe you want to take some pictures. You want to think about your frustrations, your triumphs, all of that stuff. You have a piece of technology most of you do in your hand about 90% of the day. It's called the phone, and you can make notes and take photographs. Even us that have... uh, that do what we do, Holly and I, we actually physically have to go back and go, what did I have, what did we plant in this area last year? And we have to scroll back or look at video because we don't remember. Right. Uh, some gardeners will actually take... A lot of people take notebooks. Take, take notebooks. A, a, like they a will, garden journal. They will take and put an old mailbox on the corner of their garden and they'll keep their notebook and pens in there and every time they go out they'll make a little note about this is this problem here and date it in a little journal and uh, they keep it there so they know where it's always at. You also want to harvest anything that is remaining, um, maybe not now, maybe in a couple of weeks, whatever. Just remember to do that before uh, before we get a hard freeze or a hard frost. You want to cure your winter squash for storage. You're just going to put it in a cool, sheltered, shady spot for about a month. So that could be like a garage as long as you don't have little rodents or something coming into your garage or wildlife or whatever um but even like a a cooler place of your home just away from direct sunlight then you can cure it for storage you want to take cuttings to overwinter uh you can do this i'm doing this uh currently with a wild blackberry i've taken cuttings from it and put submerged the cutting uh, cut portions in water and that will take about three to four weeks before it will begin to root but that way I can try to domesticate or uh, the wild blackberries and uh, get them planted in the garden. If you have a, win- a water feature in your garden, you do want to start thinking about winterizing that at some point. We don't really know much about that. Well, it's now, it depends on if you've got a bird feeder or the bath or how large of an item there is. But if uh, you have like a, a koi pond or what yeah. have you. Yeah. Now, Doug Oster, who is the host of The Organic Gardener and uh, everybodygardens.com up in Pittsburgh, he has a water feature, a large uh, bird bath that's in the center of his garden, and he puts there are heating elements in which you can put and put in that uh, water to keep it from freezing all winter long. And he does that to encourage the birds, and he has much activity in the dead of winter where he has the bird feeders, and the birds can come and drink water from it. So if you have a feature such as that, you there are devices in which you can put in the in the water to prevent it from freezing uh, during the winter months to help the wildlife and also give something for you to enjoy as the birds come in to feed and uh, drink water. Yep, so there's that. Um, And then you also want to divide and move your perennials. Typically that's when you're going to do that is in the fall. And then you also want to um, start start your uh, plant your place your bulbs. Fall bulbs. Uh, if it's spring, if it blooms in the spring, you want to plant it in the fall, and uh, many of the bulbs require different requirements in order to uh, do that. So we want to follow the instructions as uh, the re- as the in- bulb indicates. Now, if you live in a warmer area, you can do some fall planting. You can kind of based on you. You probably know this where you live, but you can do your fall crops then. Um, and then also, sometimes in warmer areas, you're going to do different prunings. So 
this is knowledge that you would have or if you've moved to a warmer area like the south the southern part of the united states you're not sure i would definitely suggest going to your local garden center to find out other more maintenance information so uh with that what else do we need to do or what can we do garden task for the warmer areas we don't want to forget those individuals right uh we want yeah so that that's the thing there with the bulb planting and the pruning and the flowers um all of that being said. And now, if you have, if you have fruit we, we don't want to forget garlic. we got to plant right, garlic, we too. we plant our garlic. Then uh, we the do that the first weekend of October. In the northern portions of the United States, uh, we plant the garlic first week in October and uh, harvest it in late June, early July. So we want to keep that in mind. If you're in the southern portions of the United States, there are some techniques and tips in which you can access in order to get garlic to grow in your warmer climate is a little more of a challenge, but it can be done, and there are some successful garlic growers in the South uh, when it comes to that, yes. So, yeah, and then also you want to think about if you have a fruit tree, fruit bush, what have you, um, like raspberries, those get trimmed back in the fall. Some trees get pruned in late winter, so you have to know what you have. And when you prune your berry bushes, you want to prune the right thing on them so they will produce next year because some people will prune the the wrong portion of the plant and then they have no fruit or, or and sometimes the plant is killed by the excessive trimming of the wrong stuff yep and then um even something like hydrangeas you want to make sure that you are trimming them back properly and not too much well holly uh Summer is now coming to a close, and all the kids are getting ready to go back, if not already back in school, and the nights are getting colder, and it is easy to forget about the yard, but we do not want to do that, do we? No, we don't, and we don't want to forget about those pesky Japanese beetles either. They may be gone, but they're not far. Not only do they feast on your roses and berries this summer, they laid eggs on your turf so they can start again next year. Take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granular that specifically targets scarab pests and their larvae. Simply apply to the granule with a spreader, irrigate it into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is Grub Gone easy to use, but it is non-chemical. That is effective against controlling grubs. And my favorite part about this, it's non-toxic to bees and other pollinators and beneficials. In fact, Grub Gone has no labels of restriction for use around flowers, plants, so you don't have to get out and on your hands and knees to remove the day lines before applying this product. That's Grub Gone from Phylum Bioproducts, the natural choice. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com. Twenty four seven three sixty five. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com has all the gardening information you need: videos, digital magazines, replays of shows, and more. Power Planter is a family-owned earth auger manufacturer. The Power Planter earth auger will transform your garden experience. It helps homeowners and professionals complete almost any planting or digging project faster and more efficiently than using a shovel or a spade. Power Planter Earth Auger creates loose dirt when drilling holes, giving your plants better root-to-soil contact to help reduce plant loss for healthy and more beautiful trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and grass. All of our augers are hand-welded and made in the USA lifetime warranty. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Beans and Barley Market and Cafe, a neighborhood specialty grocery store for the east side and greater Milwaukee area, where you can find all you need, from fresh produce to bakery to organic frozen dinners, from wine to fresh foods, carrot juice, a health food store with hundreds of products, vitamins, supplements, bath and body items, magazines, cars, books, and a knowledgeable staff. Catering available, open daily at 8 a.m. The restaurant serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week with a menu of good, healthy, homemade food, including vegetarian and non-vegetarian specialties. 1901 East North Avenue, Milwaukee, 414 and online at beansandbarley.com. Do you want fresh produce delivered right to your neighborhood? Check out Tree Ripe Citrus Company. Find out where to pick up quality produce at tree-ripe.com. They have beautiful tasty peaches and juicy sweet blueberries. If you're tired of the non-taste peaches and the bad blueberries from your local grocer, Tree Ripe has what you need. They come right to a stop in your neighborhood, fresh off the truck, right from the source. To find locations and schedules, visit tree-ripe.com. They're in Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, and right here in Wisconsin. 
Tree-Ripe.com is your go-to place for the freshest produce around. The Handy Safety Knight is a patented high-quality knife that's worn like a ring, so it's always conveniently at hand and very easy and efficient to work with. That's why you'll find the Handy Safety Knife at work in a wide range of industries and applications. Learn more at HandySafetyKnife.com. Use coupon code WVG to get 10% off and free shipping one-time use only at HandySafetyKnife.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar, honey, or any alternative sweetener you'd like. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Available at most natural food stores and online. Do you seek safe, effective nutrition solutions to boost your health and quality of life? Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer with 90 years of expertise. Our third generation family owned company proudly grows nutrient rich ingredients at our certified organic farm in Palmyra, Wisconsin, enabling us to produce high quality whole food solutions that change lives. For help identifying the best supplements for you, find a local healthcare professional today at standardprocess.com forward slash patience maybe you don't have to wait for the tomato to be fully ripened to harvest it and you can avoid having insects and bugs eating it this michigan garden moment is brought to you by migardener.com with over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers vegetables and herb seeds all for 99 cents a pack find out more at migardener.com with so many varieties of tomatoes available on the market You need to understand the type of tomato and how it grows and when it ripens so you know how to best utilize the fruit that you have growing on the vine. Tomatoes ripen from the bottom up. So if you are fighting with problems such as raccoons or tomato hornworm or other insects getting in your tomato patch and eating chunks of your tomatoes, you can harvest them as you see the color change from the bottom up. This can be a challenge on some varieties, such as the green zebra, that doesn't change, but gets a little darker in the lightning strike uh, signatures on the side of the fruit. By harvesting it a few days earlier, as you begin to see the color change on the bottom of the fruit, you do lose just the slightest amount of sugar content that would be obtained in the fruit if it was left on the vine for the entire ripening process. But this will ensure you a fruit that will be ready and fully ripe. Just bring it inside, set it in an indirect area of your home for two or three days and it will fully ripen. Based on the size of the tomato, from fruit to harvest, it typically takes between 20 and 30 days to get a full developed tomato. And you can always harvest your tomatoes early and green to get that great dish of fried green tomatoes. This Michigan Garden Moment is brought to you by MIGardener.com. With over 450 varieties of heirloom and organic flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents a pack. Find out more at MIGardener.com. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Ivy Organics, Power Planter, Root Assassin, Beans and Barley, BioSafe, Bob X, Pomona Universal Pectin, Pro Plugger, Standard Process, Tomato Snaps. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Today is the second Saturday of four consecutive Saturdays through the 14th of September for the Blue Mel's Landscape and Garden Center Summer Market. Over 40 vendors of crafts and food are there, as well as music and a whole lot more for you and the kids. You can find all this information at BlueMills.com. You can stop by at 4930 West Blue Miss Road, just south of Layton and Greenfield, or call 414-282-4220. Pack up the kids, bring the family out, have a great afternoon at Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Hotline and bring in our guest of the week. Doug Salemi is a professor in the Department of Entomology and Wildlife Ecology at the University of Delaware, where he's authored 95 research publications 
and has taught insect taxonomy, behavioral ecology, humans and nature, insect ecology, and other courses for over 39 years. Welcome to the program, Doug. Oh, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Doug, for taking time out of, uh, obviously, your very busy schedule there and uh, enlightening Holly and myself and all of our listeners with a little bit of your garden wisdom. Now, why are insects so important to our lives as humans? And there's been a slow decline, or maybe not a slow decline, but there has been a decline of insects in, in the world in general um, over the past, I think, 30 years. What can we do to help this decline of insects? Well, insects are, are critical to, to humans in a number of different ways. If we lost our insects, we would lose 90% of our flowering plants. If that happened, the food webs that support the mammals and the birds and the amphibians and the reptiles would collapse and we would lose all those creatures. It is insects that transfer energy from plants to other, other organisms. So, for example, most birds don't eat plants, they eat the insects that ate the plants. And insects are decomposers. They turn over nutrients really quickly. So we would lose those as, as well. And, of course, humans would not survive any of those changes. So insects are not optional. We absolutely have to have them. Okay. So I know we talk a lot about native plants, and a lot of our garden friends do. Maybe the home gardener doesn't know why native plants are, um, are vital to our ecosystem, but why are native plants vital to our ecosystems? Well, it, it is that connection with insects. Our insects are adapted to eat native plants, but they are not adapted to eat non-native plants. Now, that's a generality, but that it's it's uh, it's a pretty good one. So if you if we take uh, plants from Asia and we put them in our yards, they're supporting very few insects, and it's one of the major reasons we have insect declines in so many places. Um, so we need to get those native plants into our yards. Of course, the monarch butterfly is a perfect example. If you don't have uh, milkweeds then you don't have you don't have monarch butterflies so that's true for 90 percent of the insects that eat plants they need plants they co-evolved with well how do we determine what native plants that we should grow in our our yard in our garden in our on our property is there guidelines in which we should follow yes there are um, we have created a, a tool that is on the national wildlife federation website called native plant finder if you put in your zip code, a ranked list of the plants that are best at making insects will pop up for your county. So it's no longer guesswork. We can tell exactly which woody plants and which herbaceous plants are best at supporting the insects where we live. Okay. Now, a lot of times, like, I know I know what biodiversity is, um, unless you done some research, uh, you, might, you might not know what biodiversity is, but what is biodiversity? And as a home gardener, what can we do to increase our biodiversity, even just in our backyard? Well, biodiversity is simply the, the, the number of life forms around us. You can, you can count species and say the more species you have, the more biodiversity you have. And the reason that's important is because it is the plants and animals around us that run the ecosystems that support us. And the more plants and animals in an ecosystem, the, the more functional it is, the more productive it is. We need productive ecosystems because they create the ecosystem services that support humans. So every time we lose a species from an ecosystem, it's less productive. Now, that's why biodiversity is important. Um, the best thing we can do for, for uh, making biodiverse systems is to get those native plants back into our landscapes. Right now, our lands we have we have an area of lawn the size of New England in the United States, and we keep increasing that every year. Um, that is not a diverse ecosystem. It's not even a native plant. Uh, this is very poor at supporting the life around us. We've got to get our trees and our, our uh, meadows and, and uh, productive herbaceous plants back into our landscapes, and the biodiversity will follow if we do that. Well, you mentioned the size of the lawn that we have in the United States, and also we have to keep in mind that not all of that lawn is being treated organically. There is tons of chemicals being treated on lawns every year across the country. That's for sure. Most of that lawn is not being treated organically. Um, we have we have chem lawn and all these services that come and they spray on the calendar. And there's really no good reason to do that. There are very few lawn pests that are going to ruin your lawn. Mostly we're putting herbicides on there so that we don't have clover and other plants that actually are pretty productive. They're helping our pollinators. And we're doing this because lawn's a status symbol. 
We need to change our status symbols. And that's the thing. Uh, whenever we, uh, some people love their lawn more than they love their family. Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's the case there. And also the when people we I see this a lot at, at businesses or even homes. People have had their lawns treated, and it says, "Do not let kids or pets or walk on this." You know, basically, it's toxic, and you'll blow up if you walk on because there's so much potency to whatever they've sprayed on it. To, to, to the common person that should put up a red flag, going, "Something's not right here. Why am I spraying this toxicity on a place where it's very close to my home and the kids and wildlife?" Why, indeed, there there is no good reason. And so we do also hear about commonly invasive plants are bad. I know here in Wisconsin, the Department of Natural Resources provides a lot of information about that. But are invasive plants always bad? Is there any good things about invasive plants? Do they help the biodiversity? Anything like that? Well, no, that's that's the main reason that, that invasive plants are not good. They destroy biodiversity. An invasive plant, by definition, is a non-native plant. So it is not supporting the, the insects that we talked about, which means the, the food webs are really compromised where you have a plant invasion. So it could be that, you know, I, I read articles about, oh, this one particular insect uses this invasive plant, so therefore it's okay. Well, you have to, you have to look at the good and weigh it against the bad. Make a smiley face column and a grumpy face column. If your grumpy face column is a lot longer than your smiley face column, then the invasive plant is not worth keeping. Well, I want to go back to the native plants. Uh, is there anything that comes to the top of your mind that is a native plant but now has been deemed invasive? <coughs> no, because okay. native plants cannot be invasive. So they can be aggressive okay. um, and move around. But various native plants have always been that way. Always Plants always want to spread. And they have been duking it out with other native plants for you know millions of years. What the problem is when we bring a plant from someplace else here, it arrives without its natural enemies. So there are no diseases and no pests, and it has a competitive advantage over our native plants. And that's the primary reason it becomes invasive. The definition of an invasive plant is that it's displacing native plant communities. So native plants can't displace native plant communities. They can, they can, uh, you know, it's it's an interaction that has always occurred. Well, Doug, we really appreciate all the information that you've provided for us, and definitely, I hope it gives our listeners something to think about in regards to just their own backyards and and how they may, they may or may not treat them. Um, how can we find out more about you? I do have a website, bringingnaturehome.net. You can go and and read there, or you can go to the University of Delaware website. And I'll be there as well. Yeah, you got a couple of books out, don't you, Doug? I do. Uh, Bringing Nature Home uh, came out in 2007. The Living Landscape, along with Rick Dart, came out in 2014. And I've got a new book coming out in February called uh, Nature's Best Hope. What can we expect from that new book that you've got? <laughs> well, it or, takes or what can you and, tell us? <laughs> essentially nationalizes them. I talk about creating a new national park out of the area that is now in lawn, or half that area. If everybody cuts their lawn in half, um, we can create a national park bigger than, than any of the ones that we have in the lower 48 states. Absolutely. Uh, well, Doug, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day, not only to enlighten Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. Well, you're quite welcome. And when we come back, it's all going to be about your garden questions and our garden answers. You're listening to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. You can submit your question at TWVGShow at gmail.com anytime, anywhere. Send your questions in now to the IV Organics 3-in-1 Plant Garden Instant Access text hotline at 414-368-9311. That number again, text 414-368-9311 and send your garden question in. 
Flame Engineering, home of the Weed Dragon, the perfect propane torch kit for home and garden use. For killing weeds, no need to pull or spray. 100 other uses. Find out more at FlameEngineering.com. Use coupon code WVG19 to get free shipping. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants to multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds. RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Here at Outpost Natural Foods, it's not just that we're community-owned that sets us apart. It's the fabulous foods we sell. We celebrate Earth Day every day by offering our customers the finest natural and organic food selections in greater Milwaukee. Outpost local farmers and vendors provide our stores with a delicious selection of fresh seasonal produce that you won't want to miss. Outpost stores are located in Milwaukee, Wauwatosa, Bayview, and Mequon. We're a real Milwaukee original where anyone can shop and anyone can join. For the whole scoop about Outpost, we invite you to visit www.outpost.coop. Root Assassin, a garden tool that does all the root functions with its advanced shovel that has serrated edges on both sides. Find out more information at rootassassinshovel.com. The Norwalk Juicer is the best cold-pressed juicer on the market. Studies have shown the Norwalk Juicer produces 50 to 100% more juice than other juicers. And juice from the Norwalk is higher in minerals and nutritionally superior. Not only do you get more juice from your produce, but also better quality juice. Check it out at norwalkjuicers.com. Use coupon code GARDENTALK to get free continental U.S. shipping on the Model 290 Juicer. Never question your garden soil again. Know what's in your soil with confidence. Professional grade soil test for the home garden. My Soil Savvy has the easiest soil test on the market. Ship it to them, get your report, email with nutrients recommendation, and grow happy, healthy plants. MySoilSavvy.com. Use coupon code TWVG19 and save 10% at checkout. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Eco Garden Systems, Row Maker, Shield and Seal, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Big Fats Hot Sauce, Chapin International, Drip Garden, Norwalk Juicers, New New Healing Ointment, Phylum Bioproducts, Soil Savvy, Tree Ripe. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Ivy Organics Grow and Plant Garden naturally protects plants against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields prune and damaged surfaces for your ornamental root trees and shrubs, roses, fruit, and nut trees. This product is non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic. For more information, visit ivyorganics.com. You can send us an email through the Ivy Organics Grow and Plant email inbox. The email address is twvgshow at gmail.com. You can also send us a text on Instant Access IV Organic 31 Plant Guard, Instant Access Text Hotline, that's 414 368 That's 414 368 I just want to mention that we had a caller over the on the break said that they missed part of our program. How can they listen to it again? And you can always listen to the podcast replays this episode or any episode if you go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com and click on the radio tab, and you can also watch the video of us in studio pa- the as later well. later that week. Yes, uh, we uh, had a uh, question about peace lilies. Uh, earlier in the show, and the so call, for, for what I can understand is kind of hard to hear the caller, but she is having issues with her peace lilies turning brownish, uh, yellowish on the leaves, and that's typically with peace lilies that's a sign of root rot. So if you're having root rot, what you would do is you remove the plants from whatever soil they're in. You would kind of 
shake whatever is on those roots off. You can even run some water over those roots. Try to clean the roots. Kind of clean the roots. And then you would plant them in fresh soil. And then you don't want to overwater them. Sometimes what happens with with lilies in general is they get oversaturated and that causes the issue. Some people love their plants too much with water and essentially kills them that way. Uh, We had an email come in from TWVGshow at gmail.com. Elizabeth wants to know, she's got a question about making sauerkraut. Hey, I was just wondering if you can use red cabbage to make sauerkraut as well as the green variety. Thanks very much. You can. You certainly can. Yes, you can use the red versus the green um, variety. Uh, Red cabbage to me is a little bit more... Heat, I guess. Uh, well, I don't little, think it is, but it, it, it's a very it's got a, color to it. It's that very darkish purple color that the. But you can, can you you do not have to do them separate, correct? We can do it together. We can mix yeah, them together. Yeah, mix them together and have a very colorful mm-hmm. sauerkraut. Yep. Uh, with that, uh, any tips on making sauerkraut? Um, um, just find a reliable source as to how. And I don't really want to get into fermentation right now. Okay, so but but time. find a reliable source in which. Uh, we, we can go with. So, uh, let's see here. What? Why haven't my hydrangeas bloomed this year? What's wrong with them? They bloom fine uh, the last several years. So, if your hydrangeas have bloomed, this wouldn't be an issue. But if they've never bloomed, it's possible you pick the wrong hydrangea for the area for your zone. Um, if they continue to bloom and you have an issue this year, it's typically because of over pruning. A lot of times you may have pruned them too short. They won't bloom this year, but hopefully they'll bloom, bloom next year. Or if you have too hard of a freeze over winter, that can inhibit growth of a lot of plants. Uh, let's see here. My apple trees have not bloomed yet. Why not? I have several that have bloomed, and I have two that did not bloom this year. What could be the issue? A lot of times it's because of lack of pollination. If it's just one or two trees, it could be if you have a, a, a set of trees growing and maybe those two trees are in a lower-lying area, it could be too much fertilization, too much nitrogen. If you fertilize those trees and the runoff continues to to go into those trees, though that could be like if it was at the bottom of the hill, like a hill. okay, mm-hmm. because that nitrogen will increase the growth of the trees but not assist with the blooming. As we see with vegetation like tomatoes or peppers, a lot of green growth, very little to no production. Yep, if okay. that tree is not as hardy as the other trees, it could have gone into survival mode over the winter and not came back out from it. So you can also, if you ever have tree problems, tree issues, what have you, we're definitely glad to to help answer general questions, but definitely reach out to somebody like an arborist. A certified arborist, mm-hmm. not Bob's tree cutting service that may be here this week and gone the next. Because that's their jam. Like They, they, yeah, do, the, yeah. they do the trees, so that's what they do. Uh, I've got purple African violets that I keep in my living room, and they bloom only at Christmas, but my friends have them that bloom year-round. I water and feed them each week. What is the issue with my of African purple violets. So I actually did a lot of research on this because I don't know anything about African violets. And you learned and we learned together. We learned together. It turns out that those plants need like the correct balance of light to bloom year round. So typically like most things you're going to plant them in a south or east facing window and that's good for those African violets but if it's too much light they're not going to bloom. If it's too little light. So it makes sense that they only bloom at Christmas time because that's when the, the winter equinox is and that's when we get those shorter days. So I think she's giving them too much light. So she may have to move them or figure out where her friends have got mm-hmm. them placed in their or home or even like diffuse the light or something what have you to, to get the plant to the right balance uh let's see here i'm a new t- uh, potato grower and i noticed little green tomato like uh fruits hanging from the plant <laughs> what is this well first of all do not eat those um don't eat anything in your garden if you don't know what it is <laughs> proper <laughs> identification right. across the board doesn't right. matter Yep, um, but definitely don't eat those. And those are seed pods. So I think if you would save those seeds, you could grow a potato That's, from. It, it's seeds. a true seed potato. Uh, potato seed. seed. Potato seed. Uh, it takes a very long time to do that. That's why we grow from the chunks of potatoes uh, in the uh, when we plant in the spring. But there are groups that focus on the pure seed potato. 
uh, in that. And also, for the potato, that is a defense mechanism. Those are poisonous for human consumption and, and many animals that eat uh, w- that would choose to eat them. Uh, so we want to avoid eating them uh, or, or, or having, you know, the, the saving the seeds. I just want to correct myself when I was talking about the African violets. It's winter solstice, not winter equinox. That could be confusing. But definitely, if you have an issue with the plant, sometimes it is the lighting. Yes, there, there it is. So with uh, the, the African violets... Um, but yeah, it's pretty neat. You can have them growing in your home and uh, getting them to bloom multiple times a year for that when it comes to the uh, uh, thing there. Uh, real quickly on the potato thing, as I was getting back to that, I wanted you to correct that. Uh, they are, uh, you just ignore them. Not all varieties put the seed pod on. Some do. Yeah, just. Mike would like to know if he can can cherry tomatoes with the skins on and then remove the skins whenever he wants to use them? And the answer is you cannot can tom- uh, cherry tomatoes or any tomatoes that matter with the skins on. It is not safe to do such and is not recommended by uh, the, for the Ball Blue Book and other reputable canning resources for that. So you need to remove the skin prior to canning them. I have some container basil that is not looking so healthy. It looks droopy, and the color has gone from a dark green to a light green. It is in a 10-gallon grow bag. Can you help me? Well, certainly we can help you. This is the telltale signs of nutrient deficiency. Anytime a plant is in a container, it is much more susceptible to lack of nutrients, even if you put great compost in or potting soil in that container at the start of the season. The reason being uh, is because of the watering process. It uh, filters out that nutrients that the plant needs. In the traditional ground, there's a lot of microbes and worms, and there's not like a a drainage area. It kind of all sits there. Uh, With the container, you're continually watering, and that continually pulls that nutrients out of the out of the soil as you water, and it rains. So, a couple of things in which you can do: you can feed your plants all growing season with a slow release fertilizer, like a Dr. Earth. You just want to work it in the top uh, inch or so at the recommended rate and time for that. If it's in a position that your basil plant is now where the discoloration is occurring, the slow-release fertilizer is not going to be quick enough to pick up for the plant to utilize and to fix the problem now. So you want to go to a liquid fertilizer, or organic means preferably, and water it in at the recommended rate. The liquid fertilizer is more readily available to be picked up by the roots so it can start immediately fixing that deficiency that the plant is uh, de- uh, dealing with. And you would follow the rates and it will help turn that plant around. Now on the basil plant, if you have some very yellow leaves or even brown spotted leaves on the lower portions of the plant, go ahead and remove them all together. Take some of the really discolorated leaves off of the plant that will lessen the stress on the plant so whenever you fertilize it with the liquid fertilizer, it will be able to focus the energy on the younger tender leaves and those tough old leaves that are discolorated uh, it will not. Uh, you don't have to worry about it because you're going to remove them off the plant. And you're helping the plant uh, re-establish itself. Before we get into what's coming up next week on the program, Holly, remind them about the executive sponsor. The executive sponsor of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is Power Planter. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you. Create planting holes fast and efficiently with ease. No matter the soil type, it does the job effortlessly. Increase your root to soil contact. Leave the shovel and spade in the shed. Hand welded and made in the USA, we offer a lifetime warranty on product defects. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Tune in next week. Do not miss it. We're going to go over seven things, items that cannot be recycled that may surprise you, as well as alternatives to the canning of tomatoes. We're going to talk about different ways you can cook them up. And 
medical herbalist Tammy Hyun will be with us, plus your garden questions. That's all next week on the program. Miss any portion of this program or want to revisit it in its entirety, you can do that in a couple of different ways. One, by going to your favorite podcast providing website and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can also go to the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com clicking on the radio tab at the top of the page for full length or the highlight tab on the right hand side for segments of all past shows. Until next week, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. You have been listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. Tell a friend and join Joy and Holly again next week so we can all grow together. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show is a production of the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com in association with WI Garden Media Broadcast, live from the WNOV 860 AM and the W293CX 106.5 FM. Courier Communications Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin.